Hi, and welcome to your Inside Power. My name is Patricia Stapler, and we are going to show you how you can use the tools that you have inside of you to create your dream and create your re reality. Today, I have a very special guest with, with me, and her name is Lauren Young Durbin. She is a career design coach, and she's dedicated to helping women get unstuck in their careers. And she works with mid-career women, um, collaborating to find lucrative, fulfilling, and meaningful careers to help them realize their potential. So if you are looking for your career job, Lauren's the one to go to. So Lauren, my first question is, what is a career design coach? Yes, well, I am one. But <laughs> so the difference between a regular career coach or a career transition coach, which is why I did for I narrowed it down to career design, is that it's about being more proactive or flat out proactive in your career as opposed to reactive. And the reason why I made that pivot is because so many of my clients, they're amazing women. Every single one of my clients are amazing. So they would get a job. They would just get promoted and they excel at the new job, but wasn't something that they did with any intentionality. They were just, and then they get to the point where they're like, I don't know if I want to get promoted anymore. I don't even know if I like this job. I was just good at it. And so, mm -hmm. and so I, I feel like I want to do something new, something different, but I'm good at this. And, but I didn't really ever want to do this. So what I do about career design is, is being very intentional and proactive and thinking about what your next career move is. Um, and I help my clients figure out, figure that out. And sometimes, oftentimes it's staying with their, at least their current, uh, current uh, business or their company, but really deciding on where they want to go within that company, or if they want to go outside of the company, what kind of job they actually want as opposed to just kind of applying and then just excelling, <laughs> but not being terribly happy or fulfilled. Okay. So, you know, one of the things I noticed about people as I'm coaching with, with them oops, is that so often you have people that they don't have the intention and don't know what they're doing. And I've mm -hmm. seen even people that um, kind of get into a career because that's what somebody else told them to do, or that's yeah. maybe what their parents do. And I, that's not unlike myself. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I went to college. And basically I became a teacher and I became a music teacher, but I'm third generation educator. So it's maybe not necessarily, people don't really know what they want. So mm -hmm. how do you help them to discover what they really want to do? It's a lot of it is about giving themselves permission mm -hmm. because a lot of times, like you said, it's like, well, people expect me to do this. This is what I did. Um, like for instance, I went to law school. I'm a licensed mm -hmm. attorney, um, but I'm also a career coach. So mm -hmm. I, I, so I work with a lot of attorneys and they're like, well, I, I have the student loan debt. You know, this is what I went to school for. I'm invested in this. And I have to, I help help them push past their comfort zones. And it's like, mm -hmm. right, like you don't have to start completely over. You have skills. These right. skills are transferable. So mm -hmm. I help them give themselves permission to think bigger and beyond their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it is working with them to get past their fear of newness and uncertainty and just doing something new. So a lot of times people are just scared of something new. Like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, so that's why I spend a lot of my time really working on and also working on their confidence too, because there's sometimes like life just gets you down. <laughs> yes, it yeah. does. And, you know, self-image is something I work on a lot because you're right. People, people allow other people to pull them down and to make them feel like they're not good enough or they they, you know, if you're working with a lot of attorneys, they probably think, wow, I've got to be an attorney because I've invested all this time and money. Yeah. And then you get there and it's like, I don't really know that I want to do that. And so you're right. That is difficult. So how do you help people overcome that obstacle of feeling the guilt that they've spent all this time and money and maybe that's not the track they want to go to? Well, 
I I also I start with the practical because that's the it's not the hardest thing to get past, but that's usually the first barrier. So they're like, well, I don't know if I'll be able to make the same amount of money. Mm, <laughs> so okay. It's that's generally the first thing I work on is like a lot of whys. Why why do you think that? Is that true? How do you know that's true? Because oftentimes they just think I I can't make as much money, but they haven't actually looked into it. So mm -hmm. I work on identifying what's holding them back. Is it the fear of not making the same amount of money? Is it starting somewhere new where where you are now? You've had a lot of like you've earned a lot of respect. People know who you are. So really honing in on what is it that you're afraid of and why are the what why do you have these fears? Um, are these fears justified? Are they backed up by facts? And almost always they aren't. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so it's identifying their roadblocks and then helping them move past them. And how how difficult is that for your clients to accept? Very. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I spend a majority. I, I probably end up spending like maybe the last couple of sessions actually helping them look for the kind of job they want because a lot of this mm -hmm. is just internal it's just the internal right. work changing the mindset and that's they've spent generally about four decades or maybe about four two decades with their working lives of mm -hmm. thinking a certain way and that's not going to go away in a matter of weeks or months so I spent so much time and it's worth it because the change in mindset, like, yeah, I can do this. I don't have to keep doing things that I've been doing and continue to do them the same way. And it spills over into their life. So it isn't just confined to their career. They go like, oh, well, maybe I can start with this new hobby. Or, you know, maybe if, you know, I start running at my late thirties for some reason. <laughs> so, so maybe they, they start thinking bigger and broader mm -hmm. in other areas of their lives too. So it's worth the investment in time um, and energy of getting past those barriers because it spills over. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how when you change one thing, other things mm -hmm. start to change too. Yes. It's and they snowball. start to, and, and you're, you're so right about the mindset because we have these patterns that are ingrained in our minds and we think we have to do do a certain yeah. thing and you know that that's difficult you're right it is difficult to change that mindset and it takes work intentional work to mm -hmm. to really change that mindset yeah and especially so I, I had a my nephew had a friend who whose dad was an attorney and mm -hmm. um he he said he didn't want to be an attorney but then when he got out of college he didn't know what to do next because yeah. he took a course in public speaking, which I mean, he'd be really good at. And so then he started to go to law school and went for, I don't know, maybe a semester or maybe a year. I can't remember. And it was like, this is not what I wanted to do. And, and I was so shocked when he did apply to law school and took the LSATs and everything, you know, and did that. Because I thought, you, you've you always said you don't want to be an attorney. So why are you doing this? We didn't know what else to do. And I think a yeah. lot of people fall in that. They they don't know what to do. And so then they just start doing something. They realize they don't enjoy it. And yet you're right. You know, a lot of things prevent people from switching a job like insurance, you know, in yeah. any type of retirement, maybe they build up or things like that. And so they are scared. And so yeah. I imagine you have to do a lot of handholding at that point to help them overcome those fears. Yes. Yes. And it's, and it, it's particularly true with law school. I, I've talked to a lot of uh, people who are like, I have family with a law school because you can use it for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And except for maybe one person, I'm always like, don't go to law school. <laughs> you don't know what you want to do. Don't go to law school. Yeah. No, don't do that. Don't go to grad school unless you're getting a free ride. If you don't know what you want to do with that degree, just because you don't know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, to be fair to my clients, because like they're mid-career, I can, I can understand the entrenchment because what they've been doing has worked up to now. 
like they've succeeded, they've advanced, mm-hmm. they've got promoted, they've gotten raises. It's just now that they're reflecting you know, for whatever reason, you know, I'm not really happy. It, this isn't so it's kind of like, well, if you want something different, you have to do something different. Mm-hmm. You're feeling differently now. So, and that's okay. You've grown. Should you be right. the same person at 45 that you are at 25? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not anyhow. Yes. Yes. I hope you've grown in two decades. Yeah. So it's perfectly normal and natural to feel differently. And if you feel differently and you want something different, you're going to have to do something different. And that's mm-hmm. hard to get them to realize. Well, I guess I shouldn't say it's hard for them. They, by the time they get to me, they know they want to do something different something and do things differently it's that okay it's the doing part it's like (laughs) well i don't know what to do and they do it's like you in the beginning when you're talking about using your innate gifts and what you have inside and a lot of times i'm like you know the answer you know the answer just tell me what the answer is and sometimes i had a client yesterday i literally she's like well i don't i don't know like whether to do this thing or that thing and then she literally gave me the answer. And I said, did you just hear your answer? And she's like, no. And I just repeat it verbatim what she said back. She's like, oh, I guess I do know what to do. Yeah. Isn't that funny yeah, when we what? when we say something and don't even hear what we're saying? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I do it myself. To be yeah, honest. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, for sure. So you were saying about, you know, one skill transferring to another. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that people tend to miss that, you know, they don't have to go back and relearn everything because they already are successful. They already know certain things and it's just a matter of transferring. And if you can be successful in one area, you can go ahead and be successful in another area because that innate ability to do that is already inside you. Exactly. Exactly. And if you're a manager, being a good people manager, just that, that means that you're good at working with different groups of people. You're good mm-hmm. at communication. You're good. There's so many things. Maybe you're a good writer. Being a good writer goes across all. I mean, I can't think of one that wouldn't go across all, all kinds of jobs. So people also, when especially when they're naturally good at something, I, I'm guilty of this too. When you're naturally good at something, you don't think it's a big deal because right. everyone can do that. Everyone mm-hmm. can do that. No, not everyone can do what you can do. And not and no one else can do it the way you do it. So that's also getting them, my clients and whoever I'm, I'll happen to be talking to, uh, to recognize that, no, this is uniquely you. No, this mm-hmm. is actually something that's a natural skill. It, it might come easily to you, but you've honed this skill. It's something that comes natural and it's a sellable, transferable skill. Yeah. And, and you're so right about that. Yet We don't always realize what we have because mm-hmm. we're, we're us and we're, we're with us all the time. And we don't realize that we are unique and that, yeah. you know, just because we even know something, mm-hmm. we think everybody must know that I, I get that way, you know, <laughs> just because I understand how things work then I figure everybody does it. and, and they don't. You know, yeah. so we all have our unique things that we we know and we don't always appreciate them because they're with us all the time and we just figure everybody can do and know things. Yeah, and that's not true. I mean, it's impossible for everyone to know everything. It's for sure. It's impossible <laughs> I always for tell the story. to know everything. So my kids used to help me um, or my husband with, with technology you know, I always felt like I didn't know as much as they did. And mm-hmm. so my daughter was in this technology field and she'd come home from college and I'd say, you know, help me do this. And, and instead of helping me, she'd do it for me, which was of no help. And <laughs> so things have gotten, you know, just the technology world's exploded so much that I know my things. She knows her things. My husband knows his things. And none of us can help each other with the things that we know because they don't know enough, you know? Yeah. And it's just, it's that's the way the world's getting for not just technology, but everything. It's not possible. It's just not possible to know things 
like they did before. In fact, Darren Hardy, I don't know if you're familiar with Darren Hardy, but um, he talks about how one year in time in the 21st century is like a hundred years in the oh. past. That things mm -hmm. are moving so fast. And, you know, so it's not possible, which levels the playing field because yeah. nobody can know it all. Yeah. And there's, um, I'm sure you've heard it uh, as a coach, um, the riches are in the niches. Yeah. <laughs> So many things, and it's not just in coaching, it's with everything. So many things are getting very niched down. So mm -hmm. you can become an expert in a specific tech thing, and that's you. You're the expert in that. Obviously, you should keep learning and doing all that stuff, but it's impossible nowadays to know everything, even about things that people used to know everything about. Right. People used to know anything, everything about publishing, but now even publishing, it's like self-publishing, publishing online. It's all over the place. Right. So you really do have to start specializing. And I think that that's, a, that's something that a lot of people are starting to get used to. And it, it does make job searching a little harder or a lot harder, to be honest with you, because and, and people are like, I don't know why it's taking me so long. <laughs> it was like, mm -hmm. because you're not looking for any job. You're looking for the job. Mm -hmm. um, and I always compare it to dating. It's like, you're not, for the most part, you're not looking for <laughs> anybody. You're looking for your somebody, your person. So it's going to take some time. Unless you're like my friend who married the guy that she went on her first date with, and they're still married 20 years later. But <laughs> other than two friends, can I think about it? Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so it's 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 going to be tougher oftentimes when as you move up the ladder to find the appropriate job for you. But it's worth it. It's so worth it. Um, because you'll be a lot more fulfilled and mm -hmm. you'll be able to continue to grow. Because that oh everyone, like all my clients, they all want to continue to grow. They all say, I love learning new things. <laughs> You don't want to be stagnant and you can't be nowadays in any, mm -hmm. in any field. You have to constantly grow. You know, that's really good. You have a certain clientele that always want to learn because I don't feel like that's the majority of population. <laughs> I think a, a lot of people just, you know, they just want to keep right where they're at and just allow the world to kind of toss them around here and there. So if you've got clientele want to learn, that's amazing. Because yes. that's what you need if you want to grow. You have to continually learn. Yes. And yes. you know, so that's a certain that's a certain niche of a client too. Yes. So yes. So let me ask you this. So pretend I am coming to you and I am distraught because I don't know what I want to do. And okay. I I don't feel fulfilled in my career anymore. What would the first thing you would do? The first question I almost always ask is, what made you make this appointment? Because this okay. is generally what you're talking about is through a consultation. Um, mm -hmm. I do free consultations to find out if it's a good fit on both sides and if I can actually help you. Because I'm totally just like, I'm not the best person. Here's a recommendation. But the first question I almost always ask after, how are you? <laughs> the pleasantries is, so what made you make this appointment? And that because that helps me figure out where they are in because I and I tell people flat out I'm like I don't let my clients get away with not doing the work. Excuses don't work with me. There are reasons and there are excuses. And um, so I really I, it helps me figure out can I help them? Where are they in their journey? And if they're ready to make the investment, whether it's time, money, what do they call it, treasure. Um, time, treasure, and talent. I think that's, that's what they, they, they use it for fundraising, but it's uh, applicable here, uh, where they are. So I always like, what made you call me or, or not call me, but what made you make this appointment? Because mm -hmm. you can find out like how committed they are to making a change or they're just kind of like, I don't know. I figured, <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, well, I only work with people who are serious about this. Like 
they're right they're they're tired they're sick and tired of being sick and tired right <laughs> they're tired of being stuck they're ready to be unstuck and they know they can't do it themselves and i've had people say you know um well i don't know why I, I i can probably do this myself and i'm like well one why why are we on this call and two, <laughs> if you could do it yourself you would have done it yourself right thank you and it's okay if you want to keep doing it that's fine mm -hmm. you know i i can try to give you some tools for to help you work on it on your own but yeah that that's the first question i ask like what made you take the step to make this call mm -hmm. And then do you have a program that you put them through or, you know, how does your, how's this work? Would you just coach with the person? Do they have assignments to do things like that? Yes. Yes. And that's another common thread about my clients. They like homework. They get excited. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> I love homework. I was a very good student. <laughs> I enjoy being a student. So yes, it's, I, I do have a, a program. It's like not something set in stone, but it is pretty consistent, like finding out where they are, where they want to be. And and oftentimes, I don't know if I've ever really had a client go just from A to Z. It's always like A to G, back to G to C. <laughs> it's like, and we have to pivot because once they really get into it, they're like, you know, I thought this is what I wanted, mm -hmm. but I think I really kind of want to do this. And so we explore that. And one of the things we explore with that is, is this just a fear-based thing where you're like, oh no, I, I can't allow myself to do what I want to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing. Or is it, you know, the shiny pebble <laughs> syndrome? You're like, oh, new thing over here. Um, but yeah, so the, their coaching pro program is 100% personalized. While I have general steps that I take them through, it's really personalized to the person because everyone's different. Everyone's situation's different, but we all start with where they are, what do they want to do and what's holding them back. And we set goals after every, um, every session, they have homework they have to do that needs to be turned in before our session, at least a day before our session. So I can look over it and we can mm -hmm. talk about it. Um, and we talk about like, okay, well, how did you feel when you're doing, doing this assignment? Was it easy? Was it hard? Let's, let's really like figure out like what's going on. If it was easy, it was like, oh, what did you find easy about it? But yeah, it's, it's very customized and personalized to the person and like where they are in their journey. Okay. So how long does your program last? Um, I have two programs. One is four sessions. So that generally most people we meet every other week so that's about okay. two months it's about eight weeks um and then I have a longer one that is eight sessions so that's a little longer um sometimes it was so is that eight 16 16 months it usually ends up being about 12 months uh, not 12 months sorry 12 <laughs> 12 weeks the eight sessions over 12 weeks but um yeah so it's four sessions or eight sessions uh, and they can schedule it every week. They can schedule it um, every other week. It's really, I allow people to do it according to where they are and when they mm -hmm. can meet. And so they schedule themselves um, and we just work around their schedule. Okay. So when, when they work with you, do, do you help them to find the jobs or do you just help them to hone in on what they're looking to do? I... Don't help. Well, I shouldn't say I don't help. I don't find the jobs. I'm not a job search coach. Um, but what I do is I help them start looking at different places. Mm -hmm. um, so they almost always, I'm trying to think if someone like, I just don't have a job. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know where to look. Usually by the end of our program, of their program, they've already started applying the places. Okay. Because I also help them with their LinkedIn profile and their resume and their cover letter. So they, they start applying to places. So we talk about, okay, what different places can you, go? here are some suggestions I have for you to look mm -hmm. for different jobs. Um, but I don't find the jobs for them, but I do coach them through that process and help them as they're applying um, the ups and downs of job search. <laughs> right. Tough. 
And that can be a challenge in itself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a, yeah. So, so by the end of it, they have, they, they have jobs that they're interested in. They have a better, they're, they're ready to go on their own and do it on their own. Mm-hmm. And do they come back to you then and say, I found it. I got my yes. artist job. Yes. It's so exciting. I don't, I definitely get more excited than my clients. And they're excited. <laughs> I know what you mean about I'm that. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like static. I'm like, yeah. I'm like the biggest cheerleader. I'm like, mm-hmm. you did it. Um, yeah. So it's always great to have people come back. Uh, one client who found a job was after our second session. And she was like, all right, well, I get, you know, don't really need you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, you know, you have sessions left over. If you know things don't work out, you can totally use these sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it, they do. They, I, I like. Please let me know how things turn out. If you have questions after, I don't leave them high and dry. It's like if you have questions, email me. Let me know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's always very, very exciting when they come back and they say they found a job that they love. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to get um get your help, how would they go about finding you? They could go to taikicoaching.com. I um see I think I actually I actually have my background that I did not I can use this background. There we go. There we go. Taiki yes. coaching. <laughs> Show me still the wrong side. Taikicoaching.com. <laughs> um I probably should have that up from the beginning, but you know. <laughs> Uh, techiecoaching.com and uh, you'll see services and you can just go ahead and sign up. You'll fill out an interest form and then you can schedule your half hour free consultation and we'll have a chat. Okay. And so who is your ideal client? If somebody's listening to this and you know, who are you really looking to help? Who do you feel like you are best at helping? I am best at helping uh, professional women who are type A, ambitious, driven. It's mm-hmm. <laughs> what I was saying before. They're like, I like to learn, like to learn things. They're willing to put themselves through the discomfort that's needed to get to the other side of where they want to be. So basically, people who are re- ready to make a change um, and are driven. They're very driven. They're like they. You don't have to like homework assignments. It helps. <laughs> um, <laughs> Someone who's really looking for an accountability partner too. So the type A driven, seeking accountability, ready to make a change women out there. Okay. Any particular age range or? Um, I would say well, geriatric millennials <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, Gen X probably. That would be the easier yeah. like I, or age group, I would say. Yeah. Okay. You know who you are, by the way. If you <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking to make a change and change your career, you're the one to come to. Yes, yes. It, wait. Oh, maybe I'll just do a dance. <laughs> I can tell you. That. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Well, anything else you want to say? We have just a couple minutes left here. Do you do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I do have a, um, if you want to check out, um, uh, and, and Patricia's going to be a guest uh, in January, I have a LinkedIn live Taiki talks. Um, it's usually every Tuesday, but we, the days vary, but we let people know. So you can tune in, you can sign up on Lauren Young, Lauren Young Durbin, um, on LinkedIn and you can sign up and you'll see when the new, new, uh, lives go up and you can also look at old lives too. So um, you can check out Taiki Talks. We are done for the year, but we'll be back uh, in January. And we have people book through February. So that's great. There's something every week. (laughs) Great. Well, I appreciate you being here and sharing with my audience, Lauren. And remember, if you have a career need, go to Lauren and and you can see the information there in Tachi. Is it was? Taiki, like Nike. Taiki Taiki Coaching. TaikiCoaching.com and reach out to Lauren and schedule your free appointment today. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you. It's great. It's fun.